Good morning, uh, my people, my family. Uh, it is August 24th. It's about 10 o'clock, almost 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, when I made the video yesterday about how long it takes to get us glasses, that it, I, it took from uh, December to March 29th for me to get the eye exam, and then 45 days later uh, to pick out a frame. And on the paper, um, it said that uh, um, it could take, I thought it said two to three months. But right here, I found the paperwork, and it says it takes three to six months to get glasses. And like I said, even though you picked out the frame, you're not guaranteed that you get the color or the style that you pick out. And they said that I didn't get the glasses while I was there. This was uh, 5 15 that uh, it would be transferred to my parole office to, to a different uh, uh, facility. The glasses are not returnable. You guys are made specifically, specifically for you. Once you have the order place, you cannot cancel. Now, even where it says you are responsible for any cost of repair or replacement once they leave the optometry office. My repairs can be done in optometry, for example. But well, the thing is, if your glasses get broke, you cannot take them to an optometry, optometry to get repairs. You have to put in a um, copay, a medical copay, and do this process all over again. The doctor has to see you again. You have to go through the doctor again. So they are always billing. It's about making money. I'll say that over and over again. It's about making money. Now, if you put in a copay to see a doctor for, uh, uh, you're sick, and you want to see the doctor for, uh, some, um, uh, problems you're having, I put in a copay, I was, I had something wrong with my, whatever it was, but I got to the, the doctor's office, and I talked to the nurse, and he gave me whatever, and I told him, I said, I also have this other problem that I'm suffering from. And he told me I'd have to put in another copay. So if you go to the doctor in these facilities and you put in a copay to see if you're sick, everything wrong with you, you have to put in a copay for each and every different thing so they have records of you coming back and forth all the time. Sometimes they would send me a copay to come into the uh, medical office and, uh, just to say, well, we're just checking on you today, or we don't want to ask you, do you want a flu shot? But they keep you coming back and forth to uh, keep building. They're building and charging for things all the time. Let me mess with my light again. See the light going off and on? Oh, while I'm at it, remember I told you they're trying to get me busted for some drugs or something? I've noticed lately that my food tastes like baking soda. Everything, I my crackers, uh, I drink a pop the other day. And remember, guys, I've always made videos, and a lot of you have, about them putting stuff in our food. So, are they putting baking soda in my food so I'll test, or whatever they're putting in it, so I'll test positive for drugs? Well, I test, well, they try to pick me up, and I test positive for drugs, because, you know, baking soda they use to make that crack and, other stuff about that cocaine. So, this is something that's happened to me in the last uh, three or four days, and my food tastes like bacon. So, I can't, I'm, I can't afford to keep buying food, so I'm gonna eat it anyway. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going through my paperwork to make this video today. And as you saw when I made the police report the other day, the prevalent parts of my paperwork is missing. As I told you how they make our receipts and other paperwork and sometimes the Medela effect where things on the paperwork say something and then it changes later. Well, today I'm going over my paperwork, through my paperwork, and a lot of my paperwork is missing. Now, I'm here 24-7. So, as you know, they can get in here, go through your things, or use the technology or the whatever astral plane. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but... They are still uh, removing my paperwork out here. 
my evidence. But, as I said, I, I'm going to do this one. So, I told you guys they did not allow me to uh, hire an attorney at my court or represent myself at court. So, I put in the uh, appeal, and that paper is missing, to the appellate defenders. I didn't put it in appeal. I put in uh, a paper asking uh, the appellate uh, defenders to, the, but I told them what happened, and I asked them to send me uh, copies of my transcripts and the other court documentation, because in December, when I went to West Valley, I had written, written the courts, and everybody asked me for copies of my transcripts so people could see what they did. I never received a copy of my transcripts. I received nothing, no matter how many times I asked for that information, and if you're indigent, you are supposed to be supplied your transcripts and all court documents free of charge. But I never received any. So I wrote this appellate people asking them, can I represent myself and my appeal? And I said, now if I can't, would you please send me transcripts of what happened and my court documents? So I sent this in. And... This one came back. Dear Ms. Jones, the notice was filed in your case. The notice filed in your case was sent, been sent to our office. If you are injured and cannot afford to hire an attorney, we are responsible for seeing that uh, one have to uh, represent you in your appeal. Please complete the enclosed forms and send them back to us as soon as possible. But I didn't tell them. I already got the letter that I don't want to uh, appeal. I want the documents documentation. But they'll sign me an attorney. Anyway, now this is what they said. Background information, motion for appointment of counsel. So, they gave me they gave me some of this paperwork. And one is missing out of this. This is for my income. The other one was the, mo here it is, motion for appointment. And I didn't send this paperwork in because I don't want them to represent me. Because I found out that any inmate who files an appeal if they think their case was unfair, who filed an appeal if they lost their appeals, they get added time. So that deters a lot of inmates from filing appeals because if they lose, the state's attorney can come back in and give them more time, especially if they made a plea deal. So in my case, I knew I didn't have any choice. I took the plea deal for three years. But my sentence that they gave me, even though no one wasn't hurt, was 10 years. So if I had lost that appeal, they could have stuck me for 10 years. You understand what I'm saying? So I did not want this appeal. I wanted my transcripts and the court document. So I did not send this uh, paperwork in. And lo and behold, we received your motion for appointment. Oh, they messed with the light. We received your motion for appointment to represent you of an attorney to represent you in appeal. Now, I just told them I didn't want the no attorney. So they're trying to stick me anyway and make me lose so they can give me them 10 years. As soon as your transcripts in your case arrive in this office, we will choose the attorney and let you know who she is. Since transcripts can take time to prepare, it might be several weeks before hearing from us about the appointment. Uh, now, again, I wrote him another letter saying I did not ask you to appeal my case. I asked you for transcripts. So, would you please drop this appeal? But again, they sent me. So, I didn't. I still didn't have to send in uh, the appeal motion. So they sent me another appeal motion, even though I nice didn't drop it. And this one telling me to send an appeal motion back. They're still trying to make, get that appeal motion. Now, I'm surprised they didn't fake one and, and say I did it myself, you understand? So, here again, they're trying to get me to file the motion. I did not. And, lo and behold... I get this letter from Tasha J. Tim Batty is appointed for the appellate. Even though I still didn't send in the motion, they'll sign this woman to my case 
anyway to a case that I never wanted. And it was submitted by John Dez on March 29th. So she sends me this letter. I don't read them over and over again. This is the letter I read them. And I keep it on this kind of format so I always have a record. So I use 22 poems because it has four copies and I keep a record of whatever I send them. This is my third letter asking you to dismiss this appeal. I know you received them because in the last correspondence, you told me that I asked to represent myself. I said in the first letter, if I could not represent myself, I wanted to appeal dismissed. Then in the second reply, you sent me the motion papers, which I still have. If I did not file a motion asking for appeal, did you... That, that you filed anyway. I'm asking you again to dismiss this. I see already that you cannot be trusted to no matter how much time, or uh, that you cannot be trusted. No matter how much time you try to give me, I won't be here forever. Why would I want to appeal now when I get out soon? Because if I was getting out soon, and I know they can give me more time, this was dated 4, 419. I'm getting out in August. So why would I want to take a appeal and let them take a chance on them giving me another seven years? If I, if, 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 if I get out soon, I can file my own lawsuit. You sent me two motions to file for appeal. I have not returned them. I'm staying, I'm still holding them as proof that they did not return them. If you bring this case forward on appeal, I will see you in court with criminal charges filed against you. As God is my witness, I will see justice. Then I get another letter. I am the attorney who will be handling your case. Handling your case under appointment by the court. Ain't that something? So again, they're going to try to make me have this appeal when I told them over and over again, job it. So the courts are still involved in trying to get me back in court. But the thing about this is, they don't even let you come to court. You're, you're, you don't go before a judge about your appeal case or anything. They make the decision without you being there. So I would have got a letter saying that, we're going to make you do the 10 years. You don't even talk to an attorney. You don't even talk to a court. You're not in court anything. They make the decisions without you. All of a sudden, you've just been given extra time. And, and uh, she explained something. Uh, I have an attorney-client relationship that makes our communications frivolous or confidential under California law. But then... She sent me some paperwork, and it's missing too, that she wanted me to give her um, permission. That What's that form you sign? Com uh, giving people the commission to commu communicate with each other. She wanted to know everything about me. She wanted to be able to talk to uh, the, uh, my probation officer or parole officer. She wanted to have permission to talk to, to go in my work history. All this information, they shouldn't have nothing to do but my case. But she, uh, my uh, psychiatric records, if I have some, why would I give a appeal attorney that kind of privilege to, to go and know everything about me? So down here it says, I, uh, I invite you to write to me whenever you have questions or comments about your case, and I will respond promptly. Also, please be advised, if your address or other things changes, be in touch, uh, we can be in touch on short notice if necessary. To ensure confidentiality, um, it would be written legal mail. I look forward to working back. So, and it also says on this letter that they t take collect calls. If you have anything, uh, I can call you collect. Here, there, there it goes right there. Unless special 
advance arrangements are made, however, calls from jails and prisons are monitored, and we cannot discuss confidential matters over the phone. But we're supposed to. We're supposed to. Isn't that something? There should be lawyers and their clients should have an outlet where they have confidentiality where they can talk privately. So that gives them an excuse not to talk to the inmates, not to talk to the clients. Because they said, however, calls from jails and prisons are monitored, and we therefore cannot discuss competition matters over the telephone. This is not something. They never get in touch with you. The public defenders don't either. You never hear from them. Most people don't even know their public defenders' names. They have no idea who their public defender's names are because when they assign these public defenders and attorney to you, they never contact you. They tell you to contact them. You're supposed to call them collect. They don't accept tel- collect telephone calls. So these inmates have nothing, nobody helping them. They never know these attorneys. They never see them. They don't know their public defender's names. They have no communication with these people whatsoever. So there's no way these attorneys could be working on their cases because the inmates have not even talked to these attorneys, these public defenders, about the case. All of a sudden you show up at court and they pour that on me several times and I'll discuss that when uh, I do my transcript. I want to show you guys exactly. Like I said, a lot of my paperwork and stuff is missing, but I have enough to still nail their butt to the wall. But... In this case, she told me, she gave me a number and told me uh, I could call her collect. And they never accepted my collect calls. She said, if there's any problems or whatever, I can be reached, collect. Never, never. So I sent her, I, I told, I sent her a letter saying that you haven't uh, uh, talked with me. Because number one, if you're gonna file an appeal for a, a client, you have to. You just can't go by what you say. You have to talk to the your client, ask him what the problem was. But see, they don't do that. And um, as I said, I wrote her a hot letter saying that you haven't contacted me. You won't accept a, a collect calls as your letter states. I said, but I'm keeping records of each time I call you. Each day and time I call you. I say also, the call times that I called you, since the calls are monitored, it would show up on record that I re- I tried to reach you on these dates and times. These things are so evil. There's nothing in place to help people. Or when you get caught up in the justice system, you're there. And it's not like you're at the mercy of the court because they have no mercy. You understand what I'm saying? But... She finally, July 2nd, right before I get ready to go home, since I've been keeping, and they know I'm keeping copies, and those telephone calls are monitored, she sent me a letter that they dismissed my case. That they dismissed. But it took from December all the way to July to get my case dismissed. The Court of Appeal has dismissed your case, your, your appeal. Even though I never filed a motion for appeal. But see, God works it out. He let me catch the appeal people. And they mess. I mean, lawyers that don't even, this woman, don't even, they'll tell you they accept click calls, and they don't. Well, I'm going to look at this, guys, and try to see what paperwork I have left. I already had some missing that they said they sent me that wasn't in the packet. But, um, and as the, my attorney, she knew that paperwork was missing out that packet. All right, guys, love you. Be careful, be informed, be aware, do your research, and keep taking evidence. Because I see everybody's taking evidence. Make videos, do uh, recordings, phone recordings, keep take pictures, take video. Collect evidence on these people over and over again. Take When you talk to your officer, you don't want to do what he's supposed to do. Like uh, God is our protector told, says, get his badge number, get his card. If he don't want to help you, collect them. All right, guys, love you. Bye-bye.